Okay, so picking this back up, I know the basic arrangement I want for my text. I know what my text is going to be. I go to defont.com and I can type that in under preview, make it large, submit it, and then find this one is actually inspired by Naruto's title, right? It's not quite right for me. These are different brush scripts. And then the ones I like, I thought this one had some charm to it. You're going to do Command Shift 4 and do a targeted screen grab of. Make sure you don't cut it off. Because we're not able to download and install these typefaces on the school computers. But in a way, that's a, a blessing. Let's see what else. Let's go to the deep cuts, the last page. Let's try handwritten. No, though that's kind of cute. It's kind of kindergarten-y. Let's try school. So once you've found a few, I also like this one for tattoo, for underneath, for, for girl, a tattoo-themed font. You've made screen grabs of it. We're going to go back to PhotoP, the same file, and you're going to drag your screen grabs in. They're going to come in as smart objects. So immediately, you can play with stretching them. If you hold down Shift, you can modify them. And then just, just do a rough placement. And I'm going to set them to multiply mode. So there's this one. It's a little too hard edged, a little too heavy metal. Even if I mess with it. I put more spaces between it so I could play with the kerning. So then how would I do that? There's a reason we did compositing at the beginning of the semester, because these skills just keep helping us. So what I'm going to do is take each letter from the font, duplicate it onto its own. Come on. There we go. And then free transform that duplicate. Into what I want. So this is now called type setting. We're no longer designing the typeface. We are playing with how it is all arranged together. But in doing that, we are modifying it. A lot of free transforming. Option, Command, T. And I, I just think that's going to pull a little too much focus. But sometimes you have to play with it a little bit before you decide on an approach. So not that one. Next one I liked was this. No, too pretty. Next one I liked was this. Too brushy, but I'll keep it as an option. Because we're going to modify it quite a bit. And then there's this. And it's like somewhere in between these two is what I want. In fact, I can even play with mixing and matching because this has the problem of having repetitive O's and repetitive G's, right? So what can I do? I can hold down shift, distort it a little bit, make it a little bit bigger, do the same thing with this smart object, free transform, hold down shift, lengthen it a little bit, and now I'm going to steal just the letters I want to use. So maybe the G, 
Maybe I'll take this one and I'll duplicate it and then free transform it. And maybe I'll start modifying it right away. I'm going to make it a little bit bigger because it's the first letter. And now because it's no longer a smart object, I can fully alter it, like warp it. I can erase from it. I'm going to erase all the white. And I want it a little bit more like this one, which means I'm going to cut off the little tail. Yeah, I kind of like that G. It also is reminiscent of the G at the bottom. Now for the O, I like this O just fine. So I'm going to grab from that one. So I'm using multiple typefaces here. And I'm typesetting them. Come on, which layer? This layer. Typesetting them to fit my needs for my illustration. Hold down shift to just distort. And then we can warp, stretch, skew, all of that. I'll keep the O a little bit smaller so the G stands out. For the R, I like this R, but I might dirty up the back of it a little bit. Command J. And if you love typesetting, then graphic design is a great career option for you. Because a lot of creative people that have these skills do not enjoy messing with type for long hours of the day. But it is a needed and necessary skill. And some people love it. So that to me is really the difference between graphic designers and other creative jobs is they really love layout. They love modifying and experimenting with multiple assets that already exist. And when it's done well, it can just be beautiful. And I'm going to dirty up this back end Ooh, just with my lasso. And then just delete it away. Now I'm going to use this G, which I haven't used yet. Duplicate it, free transform it, bring it in, shrink it a little bit, hold down shift, can also warp it. Warping is always good, you can kind of control the shape that it makes. This is all called Latin text, you know, the alphabet we use, a Latin alphabet. And it's, it's all designed in contemporary use in rectangles, right? So that's why we do text blocking in rectangles. And so it's pretty versatile. You can get away with a lot of changes to it. Like I can take that R and I can warp it. And even if I turn that back edge of the R into a curve, it's still inc incredibly readable. That's not going to be a problem. Okay, now I have the O problem. So I'm going to try to modify this O. And I don't love that O. And I could always go back to this and just do a capital O. I should make it large so it's better quality. Oh, where is it? Huh. I guess that's the O. It's like a button. 
And I could steal that and use it. Yeah, interesting. Or maybe I did a zero instead of an O. Nope. <laughs> Let's try a zero. Sometimes these have numbers, sometimes they don't. These demo fonts. Yeah, this doesn't have. Sure enough, the O is a button. So that's not all that useful. So let's, well, no, I like it. Let's do it. So I'm going to steal the button. Command Shift 4. Steal it. Steal is the wrong term. Because this is appropriated. appropriated, or this is allowed, licensed for personal use. Right? But then I can cut out the inside of that button. wonder why a button. It's interesting. All right. I can get creative with how I cut it out. For instance, we're going to use all our compositing skills. I can use my magic wand and just select the white space inside this O, duplicate that, bring that up, and on top, ah, on top of my button, and then free transform it, option command T, stretch it with shift, and kind of create my own, right? Now those look similar, but they're pretty different. And then the in, I like this in, I'm going to use that in. Turn off these other layers and just focus on the typesetting. So typesetting has a lot of components to it. The size of the letters, the angle of the letters, the space between the letters. Do you guys remember what that's called? Typesetting is just the practice of placing everything. But what is the space between letters called? Yes, kerning. K-E-R-N, the kerning. No, very good. And then the space between lines of type, like underneath this one going into the next line, that's called the leading because they would use different thicknesses of, of lead bar in printing presses to get it. So I like this in, but I don't like how straight up and down it is. So how can I modify it? See, first with the O, remember you can always change things to multiply mode. There it is. Nope, where's the O? There it is. Nope. <laughs> like I said, you're going to get lots of little layers in this project. Okay, there's the O. So I'm going to cut away with my lasso right there. How is that rasterized? Oh, because it's the button. That's right. All right. So I can cut away from it. Give it a little bit of something. And now with the N. Yep. I like to use my lasso for it just because it's more kind of vector friendly. So if I wanted to add on to the N, I just make a little shape and then I just say edit fill with black. instead of using a brush or something, which can be softer edged, but either way works. Then I'll add on a little bit here. Fill with black. Okay, so I have Gorgon Girl. Now I haven't modified Girl at all, but I hope you can see how I've really modified the Gorgon from the different sources. And as you work on it, you might decide on other things. It's nice to separate all of these, set them all.